A podcast listener named Ted writes in, Pastor John, I understand that episode number 798, Could a Complementarian Egalitarian Marriage Work?, was a warning for anyone entering into marriage. But what about those of us who find ourselves already in a complementarian, egalitarian marriage already? According to you, Pastor John, it is a sin to leave it, and it is a sin to sacrifice conscience to make the marriage work. What options does a complementarian husband have in such a situation? I found this question to be very helpful. In fact, I think I'm going to have to correct something that I said in number 798. Um, The main point of that podcast that asked Pastor John stands, I think, namely that I would discourage a marriage between two believers with deeply held but contradictory views of the roles of husband and wife. That is, one being an egalitarian and one being a complementarian. I think it will also stand that if such a marriage goes forward or has already happened, which is what we're being asked about, it is inevitable that the effort to make it work will involve sin. Now, I'll explain in a minute what I mean by that phrase, involve sin. That's a different way of saying it than I said in episode 798. So here's where the correction is needed in what I said. What I stressed there was that the reason there would be sin in such a marriage inevitably is that the conscience of one or the other spouse would have to be compromised to make the marriage work, and it is a sin to compromise your conscience. Now, I think my last sentence was this. I I went back and jotted it down. Walking into a marriage with this level of disagreement about your respective roles would be walking into a relationship that it is sin to leave, a divorce, and it, uh, in which someone must sin to make it work. And what I meant in the context uh, in that last phrase was that someone must sin because someone must compromise his conscience. But the longer I have thought about this, the less comfortable I am saying that the compromises one might have to make in such a marriage are necessarily compromises of conscience. In other words, I think I can say to those of you who are in such marriages, whether you moved in intentionally or slipped in because somebody changed his mind later— Uh, where the husband and wife do not agree on the role of husband and wife, it may be possible to make concessions for the sake of preserving the marriage, which do not necessarily compromise your conviction or your conscience. So let me try to illustrate. Suppose he is a complementarian and believes he should take the lead in calling his wife and family together for Bible reading and prayer each evening. And suppose she is an egalitarian and bristles at the thought that his calling her and the children together is a responsibility invested in him simply because he is the husband and the father. She doesn't like that. Now, suppose that he makes a practice of gently, joyfully inviting the family. Let's, let's, the word is let's, not come, but let's gather inviting the family to gather in the living room each night. Now, his wife may believe that this practice is based on her husband's unbiblical views, that is the way he's taking initiative here and doing it uh, consistently, but may concede to the practice for the sake of peace in the home. She doesn't change her egalitarian view of the Scripture, and she doesn't see her behavior uh, as a compromise of conscience because she is preserving what she perceives as a higher good, namely the sanctity and peace of the marriage, I think she is not sinning against her conscience in that specific choice. That's that's a correction, I think, from what I said last time. Now, let's suppose that as the husband consistently 
takes the initiative to invite his wife and the children together for Bible reading. She increasingly bristles at this and becomes resistant to this uh, view of headship. She eventually refuses to come when he asks, and she does not see this refusal as sinful because she thinks he is acting with a high hand, because it's not taught in the Bible, so he should take it, that kind of initiative as husband. He continues to invite her, uh, not demand that she come. He sees that she is becoming increasingly resistant and angry, and so he decides to say to her, that he won't press her anymore with invitations, but uh, will wait until she's ready or willing to come and then proceeds with the kids. I don't think he has acted against his conscience in that specific choice. He has not changed his views. He's, he wishes things were otherwise, but for the sake of the larger endurance of the marriage, he relents in the exercise of his leadership over his wife at that point. So what did I mean earlier when I said at the beginning um, that for this marriage to work, it's going to inevitably involve sin? I realize all marriages <laughs> between sinners inevitably involve sin. I'm not saying something go banal as that. What, what I'm thinking uh, is that the particular dynamics created by differing convictions about Headship and submission will lead to particular kinds of sin that could be avoided if that kind of marriage were avoided. The sins that I have in mind would include something like this. If he is the complementarian and backs away from the leadership he believes he should take because she's resistant, then I think sin is involved in that resistance. But if he's the complementarian and she adapts to his leadership for the sake of peace, it is almost inevitable, given human nature, that she is at some point going to become resentful towards his leadership, or he's going to become sinfully suspicious that she's just acting insincerely. In other words, the, the deeply held disagreement which is not peripheral, but central to their daily lives, makes those kinds of temptations to sin very, very likely and hard to resist. So the upshot of this particular S. Pastor John episode is to confirm a part of 798, namely that, that a, a marriage between a complementarian and an egalitarian is unadvisable, but also to correct a part of 798, namely that the compromises one might have to make to cause such a marriage to persevere and to the degree possible flourish uh, are not necessarily sinful compromises of conscience. Such an important issue. Thank you for those corrections and refinements. And uh, like everything we talk about, this is an open topic of discussion in our podcast family. And if you have a follow-up question on this or any other episode, send it to us. If it's related to this episode, mention episode 798 or episode 867 and shoot us an email to askpastorjohn at desiringgod.org. Well, every once in a while, I pick up the phone and bother Dr. Don Carson. I call him at home and get him to explain a biblical theme for 15 to 20 minutes and then share that with you on the podcast. I'm going to do that again tomorrow. I'm your host, Tony Ranke, and I'll see you then.